ICW Eurodrive, now empowered. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Our top stories this week. Electric car dual can unlock the battery industry in South Africa. African Rainbow Minerals warns of South Africa's logistics ineptitude. And the wheels start turning on the bus rapid transit system. The automotive industry is changing as oil prices rise and global warming intensifies, bringing the electric car into vogue. Irma Fenter takes a look at battery development and South Africa's efforts to get into the game. Zero emission electric vehicles are being punted as the future of the automotive industry. Run by batteries, charged by using a simple wall plug instead of using petrol or diesel, several governments are gearing up for its launch and expected expansion. The US, for example, has envisaged a fleet of one million electric vehicles on its roads by 2015, with the government providing $25 billion in soft loans to develop these plug-in cars. South Africa is also developing its own electric vehicle in the form of the Jewel. Optimal Energy hopes to start pilot production of this vehicle in 2010. CEO Kubus Meirung says the imminent production of the car creates a great opportunity for South Africa to get into the new oil, or the production of lithium-ion batteries. But is battery manufacturing viable in South Africa? It's viable. Um, we've been going around for three years to universities, to wherever, and say, we must get into the battery business. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a multi-billion dollar business, for sure. Um, and it took a while for that momentum to build. And as I say, we actually had good battery capability in this country up to 94. But now, very recently, the Department of Science and Technology has started working on, on establishing a battery competence center. Uh, which they will make some announcements about in future. Um, and also at IDC level, they've started a feasibility study into setting up a battery plant in South Africa, a, a battery uh, cell plant in South Africa. So I think, you know, oil, you either have it under the ground or in the sea, or you don't have it. Um, battery cell manufacture, it's, it's, it's intellectual capability. Uh, and you can decide to do it, and, 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 and it's early enough in the process that we can really decide at this stage, yes, we're going to do it, it's going to take some investment, uh, but I think it's going to put us in a fantastic position going into the future. South Africa's manganese miners want better manganese logistics. This week, a second manganese miner highlighted the vulnerability of South Africa's logistical infrastructure. Mining Weekly's Martin Kremer has the story after the break. SEW Eurodrive, now empowered. First it was BHP Billiton's Marius Kloppers who put the case for a bigger and better logistic solution for South Africa's manganese exports. And now an even more influential South African, Patrice Mutsepe, has added his voice to the issue. It's not just uh, an industry specific issue. Uh, it's about the country as a whole, our global competitiveness. And, and the problem is, if, if there's a growth in demand globally for any of the metals that we produce or even other South African companies, if, if we don't feed in or supply that market uh, quick, quickly enough, Australia, Brazil, various other countries that are competing with us move very fast. And, and those opportunities, primarily because of logistical uh, ineptitude on our side, those opportunities are lost to us. So, BHP Bulletin's Kloppers made the point that South Africa has good manganese in the Kalahari, but poor logistics to get it to world markets. What we do know is that there are very significant manganese resources in the, um, in the Kalahari, and uh, we've basically got a logistical constraint. Very, very important question. The, the whole transnet issue, you, you sometimes get very impatient and, and very irritable when, when you see what, how Ex extremely competitive partnerships in other countries between business and governments to, to create those opportunities for those countries. And you realize that, uh, that, that you know, there's so much that we can do, and we're just we're not doing as, as well as we can. But South Africa is still a major partner in the world, Bank of uh, 60% of the hydride comes from actually come from Ashman, and that is what we own together with Asor, very good quality manganese, and 
this, uh, this position no well for the future. Uh, the slide clearly indicates where the hydrate coming from in the world. Major portion, more than 35 percent, comes out of South Africa. There are many new manganese miners emerging in the Northern Cape, and the demand for rail is greater than supply. There is thus a fundamental business case for South Africa to create a higher capacity and lower cost manganese route that can be an addendum to the existing Sishan Saldana iron ore line through the construction of additional rail loops. The alternative is to have a rich resource, but no way to get it to market competitively. Johannesburg's Rea Via bus rapid transit system started running at the end of August. Irma Fenter attended the launch and tracked the bus system's first few days of operation. Much has been said about Rio Vea since its launch on the 30th of August. Most of this has been focused on some of the operational glitches the system experienced or the reaction from the taxi industry. So much so that a few basic questions can easily be forgotten. Does the system work? And what does Rio Vea mean to the city of Johannesburg? The city's transportation executive director, Lisa Seftal, said at the launch that she was pleased with how years of work have finally come together. It's just absolutely amazing. I can't believe that it's actually happened, that the buses have gone off smoothly, that there's so much commuter excitement. I think if we just saw the Soweto buses coming past now, they were chock-a-block full, and um, we just hope that everything will go well. Obviously, there have been teething problems. We've also seen the doors don't open, but I think the public will take it with the spirit that is intended, that this is a process, we're all involved, and we want to make it work. At the launch, Transport Minister Sibosiso Ndebele emphasized one particular sea change the BRT system will bring about unlocking the city's nightlife. All current public transport systems stop working when the sun goes down. However, the BRT system, running until late, will allow people dependent on taxis, metro rail or metro bus to go out at night. I think we must now accept our people as free people, free to work, but also free to enjoy themselves out there. And uh, you do that when we're in London, you do that when we're in New York, in Atlanta, we call it taxi anytime, it's available, it takes you and it's, you know, it's going to take you to exactly that address and, and so forth. We have not yet reached that level. It's a huge opportunity. Some of us may have heard the words mind the gap in London when stepping on the tube, but never in Johannesburg. Now, however, times have changed. With the current starter service to grow as next year's World Cup approaches and the fleet of 40 buses to grow to 143 buses, it is hoped Johannesburg's BRT system will smooth the way for the introduction of similar systems in Durban, Cape Town and Port Elizabeth. And now for a sneak preview of this week's Engineering News magazine. Read our cover story on the Chinese automotive market and how they aim to move from quality manufacturing to new generation vehicles. Read how an environment-friendly road-building project in the Greater St. Lucia Wetland Park is enhancing the area's status as a natural world heritage site. And read how search engine Google will begin collecting images for a South African Street View feature on Google Maps. And in Mining Weekly this week, Read our cover story detailing how mining investors are blocking deals they don't want and ousting boards they don't like. We report that South Africa is contemplating more stringent safety standards for the mining sector. And we report that the Namibian government is set to supply uranium and diamonds directly to India. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. Prima Media's engineering news has delivered unmatched insight into the real economy. For breaking news, visit engineeringnews.co.za. The engineering news, not just for engineers.